So um, yeah, I've got quite a lot to go through, so it's really to set the scene. Um, we've got a whole afternoon of, of map server related talks, and then there's a birds of a feather session at the end, so we can have more longer debates and, and questions at the end. So I'm going to go through a few things for the presentation. So just an introduction to map server, because it's been around for a while, so there's probably people who have who have, has, it's passed them by, so they don't know what it is. So a quick introduction. Then I'm going to talk about the, the recent releases and the new features in the, the new versions of, of Map Server. Then um, briefly go through a few things from the, the Map Server ecosystem. So these are projects related or using Map Server. So hopefully they're of interest to, to Map Server users. So it's just really to make you aware of them and, and provide some links so you can look into them further. Then um, how to get involved in, in the Map Server community and the project. And finally, finish with the ongoing and, and future development and the, the next planned releases of Map Server. So, um, yeah, Map Server's been around for a while. So, version one was released in, in 1997 by Steve Lime um, in, the, in the States. And it's an open source project, obviously, or we wouldn't be here. And it's also a, a founding OSGO project. So, it's, it's kind of well known, but um, there might have been a kind of lack of news recently, but there, there's been lots of things to talk about. Uh, it focuses on OGC compliancy, so you get all the WMS, WFS, WCS kind of out of the box, so it supports all those. It's got a reputation for, for being very fast. Um, it'd be good to have the WMS shootout again to see, see which is the fastest still, but that would be a lot, a lot of work, I presume, to, to set up. And it's also cross-platform, cross so it runs on, on, on all the, the main operating systems, which is kind of a nice feature. Um, I just took some quotes from Paul Ramsey's um, presentation on Map Server. So this dates back to 2008, but basically it's, it still applies now. So I guess the main thing is it's, uh, it's an engine rather than a, a fully blown application, so you can more easily plug it into other things. It doesn't have a, a GUI, although GUIs have been created around it, but it's, uh, it makes it so you can, you can put other things around it and integrate it into to larger systems. It uses a CGI technology from, from 1993, which um, I'll come on to later, but it's kind of back in fashion. Well, not CGI, but the, the similar approach. Uh, it's fast, uh, it's powerful, and it's, it's not the creature of any one organization. So there's no single company behind it or controlling it. It's kind of grown up organically from, from lots of different companies and, and users and organizations. So um, here's a few stats from OpenHub. So it's had almost 150 contributors, and there's almost half a million lines of code, including the tests and things. It's mostly written in C, although there's parts in C++. There's also MapScript, which is the map service scripting language, which is available in lots of different languages, so generated via something called Swig. So you can have MapScript in Python, Ruby, PHP, um, Java, and a few others. And it's taken over 100 years of effort, so using this, um, this cost modeling from, from OpenHub. So it's, it's been around a while, and there's, there's a lot in there. There's probably features that that people have forgotten about that are still, still in there that can be used. Um, so on to the, the releases and the new features. So it's been a, a few years since the last status report, which was in, in Bonn. So it's now, now up to three years. So I'll be covering the releases of Map Server since then. Uh, there's also a link to the 2015 status report as well. So since, um, yeah, since the last report, there's been two major releases, 7.2 and 7.4 building on top of the, the 7 release. And there's also been a new release of Map Cache this year. So Map Cache is kind of in the, the Map Server family. So, so you can cache your WMS services. So it's kind of in the, uh, there's been a new release of that recently and, and more development on, on Map Cache. So these are some of the, the feature highlights from, from 7.2 and 7.4. So the first three I'll go to uh, a little more detail on the vector tiles, the, the compositing filters and map script. And there's also a couple of other nice fe features. Um, you can now filter WMS requests. I think this is Daniel that implemented this using OGC filters. So you can pass in a filter from um, a URL and filter your w WMS directly. And all Europeans love the Inspire support. So um, there's new stuff for Inspire for WCS too. So yeah, the, the main features um, I'm going to focus on today, um, I guess the main one people were, were waiting for was the, the vector tiles. So this was um, written by Thomas Bonfort and, and Steve Lime kind of got it in at the end. And Steve Lime's also got a, a map server demo on GitHub. So the, there's lots of links in this presentation, so you can connect to all these later. 
But there's a, a demo using a map server backend and uh, the Mapbox GL client. And you can kind of see the, the picture there, some of the output. So there's a, a ready-made demo so you can test the, the vector tiles. Uh, vector tile support you can add into a map file. So map server is driven by kind of its own configuration language, um, and these is kind of all in text files. And to add in vector tiles, you can just add in this output format. So it's only it's four line block, and then you've got map box um, vector tile support. If you want to check that your version of, or your your map server install version of map server has has this support, then you can run mapserve-v from the command line, and you can see everything that's supported, all the inputs and outputs. Uh, and you're looking for the supports PBF, so this protocol binary format. But all of the, the main map server distribution channels have, have the, um, the vector output now integrated. So to access the vector tiles, you can use the kind of Google uh, XYZ URL format. So that's kind of the, the typical way of of accessing vector tiles, you pass in your, your zoom and your x and your y to get a tile back. But uh, a nice thing with, with Map Server, which um, may have been more luck than design, I'm not sure, but um, you can access them via a WMS interface. So you can actually get your vector tiles using WMS. And this has the, the nice feature that you can then cache your vector tiles using Map Cache directly, because it's like a WMS. And you can also apply the, the filters, the WMS filters, to, um, to your vector tiles. Uh, one of the other nice features is the chainable compositing features. So I think these arrived in version 7, but in 7.2 they became chainable, which basically meant you could implement several filters on top of each other for a layer. And you can do things with these filters such as blurring and shadows, grayscale and uh, transparency. And to add these to a layer, you add in a composite block, and then you can add in your filters. Um, you have to read the docs to, to find out exactly how to do them. But you end up with, um, you can do nice things like the, the hill shade you see in, in the background there. And this is just another example from, um, I found on the, um, on the users list. So this is one where you can see the buildings with the nice blurry shadow effect. So um, it's well worth having a look at these if you want to make some kind of stunning maps like, like this one. Uh, there's been a lot of changes to the Python map script. So I've been working on, on that recently. So now there's Python 3 support since 7.2 for MapScript. Uh, the, there's been a test suite for, for Python MapScript that's been around since um, about 2000, but it kind of fell out of use. So that's been resurrected. So there's 300 tests now that uh, have been added to continuous integration to make sure that nothing breaks between, between updates and code changes. Uh, there's a couple of links there. There's one to a, a Jupyter notebook, which just shows what you can do with Python MapScript. Um, the kind of th things you can create and legends and create maps. There's also um, map scripts being added to PyPy if you're a Windows user. And there's also a geo interface. So this has been used in a few other Python libraries like Shapely and Fiona. So that's been added to geometry classes for, for map script. Uh, the other big map script change was the PHP world. So previously, the PHP map script was a whole separate entity. Uh, in the most recent release, uh, the PHP map script is generated by Swig, so it's generated using the same thing that generates Python. So that's one of the, the big recent changes which should make it easier to, to maintain in the future. So that's kind of a, a quick look at the new features. Um, and as I say, yeah, this is the, the ecosystem. So this is uh, projects that are related to map server that hopefully interest some people. So I probably missed lots, but um, there's probably some here that you might not be aware of. Um, OSGO Live, you should all be aware of, as you have the USB key. Um, there's been a few changes on the map server side. So map cache wasn't there previously in the, the previous version, so there's now, um, that's now installed. There's an overview and a quick start. So if you're a map server user and you haven't used map cache, you can, you can see how that's all put together on, on OSGO Live. And if you want to speed up your WMS services, then, then that's a great start. Uh, map server was updated to the latest version, and there's also a couple of other front-end quick starts um, that use map server to, as a back-end. So the GeoX has been added, and, and GeoMoose was already using the, the map server back-end. So yeah, map, map server is back-end, but you need a client to interact with it. So there's a couple of examples. There's, there's plenty more that you could use. Um, I just want to mention briefly all the distribution channels for, for map server. So there's the Debian packaging. So this allows you to install Map Server and, and its associated libraries in a single line, which is very useful for your for your setting up your cloud VMs and um, installing things quickly in a, in a nice simple script. 
So that's used on OS Geo Live, and it's also used for kind of Ubuntu. There's also Map Server for Windows, um, maintained by Jeff McKenna. So this provides kind of Map Server setup ready for Windows with Apache. So you install it, and it's all ready to go with lots of additional applications. So I think Map Bender and things are on there. And it also has the latest versions of all the, the map script flavors, like the, the PHP and the, the Python, uh, Python 3.7 version. There's also another set of Windows builds um, from GIS internals. And these, these provide lots of different um, versions of Map Server and, and GDAL for various Visual Studio releases. And it also has a nice Windows development kit, so you can compile it yourself on Windows without having to worry about compiling about 20 other dependencies. And these are also used to the underpin the continuing integration for, for both GDAL and Map Server. So all these Windows libraries, they, they're coming from, from here. Um, Martin gave a, a talk this morning on GC2 and, and VIDI. So he was kind enough to, to give a keynote for uh, the OSGEO chapter in Ireland as well. So um, his project allows you to quickly build a spatial data infrastructure. And it uses Map Server and QGIS Server and Map Cache on the back end. So uh, I've linked to a workshop there if you want to see how to, to configure it. And then VIDI is its associated front end. And it allows you to, to edit kind of your map, map server styles and, and colors and things all, all through a, a browser interface. Um, I mentioned before about the CGI. So this is a, a talk I came across this year from um, David Bittner from Solspec. So there's a link to the, to the talk. But he's set up map server um, on AWS Lambda. So AWS Lambda, it fits nicely with the CGI kind of paradigm of you have a request come in, it's dealt with, it sends it back, and then it's gone. Um, so that actually fits very well with, with Map Server, and you can get um, kind of high scale and high performance Map Server. And yeah, it had a great quote in that talk about Map Server is like a cockroach, and it never dies. So basically, you, you can do all you, all you want, but you can't really kill Map Server because every request is kind of an individual event. So yeah, that's the AWS Lambda, so it's serverless, serverless kind of um, map server. Uh, the Zoo project, I think there's um, some talks uh, this week on the Zoo project. But, uh, so that's web processing service platform. And that uses map server on the back end for publishing out results from the WPS as WMS, WFS, or WF, uh, WCS. So um, that's kind of a related within kind of the, the map server OSGO family. Uh, the Mappy file is a library that, that I've been writing. So it's basically a, a Python library that you can use to, to pass and then modify map server map files in Python. And it doesn't use map script or anything else. So it's a pure Python library, so you don't have to worry about dependencies. So you can load it up into a, a JSON-like structure, modify it in Python, and then spit it back out as a, a map file. So there's a, an online demonstration you can try out and put in your map files and see if you can break it. But um, it, should, it should work with any map file. Um, so yeah, the next, the next step is um, the getting involved in the map server community. So there's several different communication channels. The, the main kind of traditional ones that have been around for a while are the email mailing lists, so you can sign up for those today. There's one for users and one for developers. You'll feel free to sign up for both. There's an IRC channel, um, which is Internet Relay Chat, or kind of Slack for, for people who haven't used IRC before. There's a, a Twitter account. And on GIS Stack Exchange, there's questions tagged with Map Server. So there's kind of a few different ways to get support and things um, via those methods. On the Map Server website, there's, there's a wiki and there's a community gallery. So if you've got nice Map Server systems and you haven't shared them, and you've got a nice public link, then, then please add them to the community gallery. So I just picked um, an example here. And I think there's actually a presentation on this possibly in another room right now on the Buenos Aires city map. So that's built using, using Map Server. So yeah, have a look at the gallery and you can see kind of the, you can see how Map Server has evolved through the ages as well because the wiki page has been there for a while. So there's lots of different versions of Map Server on there. Uh, another method to get involved is, are the code sprints. So this year's OSGO community sprint was in, was in Minnesota, which is the, the birthplace of Map Server. So it was Steve Lime, who's still very much involved in the project, was, was organizing that. So there was quite a few discussions around Map Server, and, and several people here attended it. Um, as Daniel mentioned, yeah, there's a PSC, a project steering committee, so we're up to 15 members. So I've met most people, not, not everyone before, but um, there's lots of people here at the moment. So for the birds of a feather, that'd be good. There's um, 
a service providers page. So if you need Map Server custom development, there's a list of providers. So that's linked to here. And there's a sponsors page, although I think the last sponsor was 2007. So there's scope for uh, more sponsorship of, of Map Server. Um, and as with all the projects at the moment, um, yeah, helps appreciated on tutorials, documentation, uh, beta release testing. So there's there's plenty of job op job opportunities um, for the, the Map Server project. I'm just going to quickly touch on the ongoing and future development. So any any major major development is is proposed as a request for comments. So there's a link here. You can go to the Map Server site and you can kind of get an idea of the the major development that's that's upcoming. So just to pick a few out. There's uh, Daniel's one on MapML, so I'm not going to talk much about this as there's a presentation later on today, but it's a new output format for, for Map Server. Um, Jerome Bouy has been working on improving the SLD support in Map Server, so was, there was a few limitations and, um, and missing, missing implementations for SLD. And as a bonus for that SLD, SLD support, it means that you're going to be able to use um, expressions in, in style properties on a layer. So you can make your map files more dynamic. So that's, that's going to be a nice feature that's kind of come, come about thanks to the SLD support. Um, Jerome's also proposed a, a new map cache tool, map cache detail. And this will find areas of a cache um, that are missing and output it as a JSON report. So if you need to populate large caches or refresh caches, then that will help um, with, that, with, with sorting those out. Uh, I've got a link here to the, at the top um, to the Minnesota code sprint discussions. So there's quite a lot of things discussed and, and proposed. So um, Evan here is, is, is working on the Project 6 API support for, for Map Server. There's a couple of talks about WFS3, which I now have found out is not called WFS3 anymore. Um, it's called Open Features or something. OGC API. OGC, um, API. API, OK. So um, that needs updating. But yeah, that's going to impact Map Server. And if Map Server wants to stick with all the OGC um, OGC standards, then hopefully at some point that will be implemented. And then just moving to version 8, there's um, some scope for cleanup on the map file syntax as there's kind of been lots of things over the years that have grown up that might not be used anymore. Um, and yeah, Steve Lime is also working on demo refactoring and developments of snippets. So just to show what you can do and how to do them in, in a map file. So for the next releases, there's a 7.6 planned for later this year. Um, and then hopefully there'll be a version 8 next year, which will have some, some bigger features and probably drop in some, some legacy stuff. So it'll be um, kind of a, a major version change. So just in summary, so the Map Server project is alive and well. It's good to see so many people in this room. And there has been new releases out, and there's more development plans and new future releases planned. There's lots of projects related to Map Server, so um, hopefully some of those will, will, interest, will interest you. So it's, it's good to kind of see the related projects. And yeah, please get involved in the project um, and become part of the, the Map Server community. So that's everything. So um, thanks for your time. And yeah, there's two more Map Server sessions following this one. So thanks. So we've got time for questions. We're right on time. So we have a good five minutes for questions. The mappy file um, Python script that you've developed, do you consider it useful for being used to do migrations between map file versions? You know how the syntax changes between versions of map files? Uh, yeah, at, at the moment, as part of MappyFile, I was working on a, a JSON schema. So MappyFile uses a JSON schema for validation. So um, that's part of the, the move to version 8, is just to define what actually is valid map file syntax, because there's no official schema and documentation. So once the schema is in place for, for the map file, then when, when there's a new schema and there's new stuff, um, new changes to the map file, then they'll be able to compare between different schemas and different versions of map files. And then that should be, make it easier to, to migrate to, to new versions. So. Uh, in a few minutes, we'll be on the optimization, optimization tips and tricks by Lars.
So uh, thank you, thank you, Seth.